Hey everybody, today we saw a new movie fresh out of Minnesota quarantine. That movie was Monster Hunter. Connor, what is the plot of Monster Hunter? Monster Hunter stars Mila Jonovich and it's directed by her husband as always as she is a marine with rapper T.I. and a couple other cannon fodder people and they end up driving through the desert and going into a big cloud which takes them to Monster Hunter World. Then she fucks around for an hour and meets a caveman guy who's a fucking monster hunter. And then they fuck around for like an hour and then uh, they go and they meet Ron Perlman who can speak English for no reason even though he's also a monster hunter. He's like, I studied the language but uh, but yet my crew doesn't know anything about the language despite the fact that I know how to use it and I studied it for years. Uh, and then there's like a 20 minute scene of them like fighting a monster and then the monster goes to Earth and they kill the monster and then the monster, Ron Perlman's like, there's more monsters. And they jump through a portal and then they're gonna fight more monsters in the sequel that's never gonna happen at the end. So Aiden, what did you think of Monster Hunter? <laughs> the movie. Uh, it's, uh, it's bad. Uh, first off, I don't understand why this is like an isekai, like Sword Art Online, where she's in the real world and she gets teleported to the fantasy world. Uh, it's a horrible idea. It's horrible in everything. It's terrible. <laughs> it sucks ass. Um, you know, for being such a cheap movie, they they managed to make things look reasonably nice. The monsters look kind of good. If only they could. Well, like, it all looks pretty nice, if only they could have used some of that money to have, for the sound editing and, and to yeah, make a script that's not garbage. There's some blatant audio issues at the start with, like, mic crackling that and they then it happens couldn't again. afford the ADR for some reason. It happens with Perlman at the end. I think it must have been, like, a COVID thing where they couldn't have the lines guess. redone. I guess. Or maybe they were ADR lines that, due to COVID, they had to do at home studios and they were too quiet, but then they didn't. It felt too awkward to ask him to fix. I guess. I don't, I don't know. There's just a lot cracking. of mic cracking. That's all cracking. that matters. There's a really fucking blatant Hershey's ad in the middle where she gives the caveman guy a Hershey's bar and they talk about how great Hershey's is while he suckles the rap. For like a ten minute commercial. It's but not on top ten, of it's, that. It's like five. It's a lot. On top of that, like one, the opening shot once in the movie. As a Coca-Cola can, yes. As a Coca-Cola can. After the Ron Perlman does his Pirates of the Caribbean opening, but then there's the Coke can to enter, to introduce Mila Jovovich. Yeah. Who is Mila uh, Jovovich? The main problem with the movie is that the first hour of the movie, the the movie doesn't really start until like 20 minutes from the end when they get to the the Monster Hunter Guild and meet Ron Perlman. For most of the movie, Mila Jojovich, his character, Mila Jojovich, is hanging out with some guy who doesn't speak English and just makes weird caveman noises. And him and her stand around on like this hundred meter pile of rocks and fuck around. And then an hour into the movie they kill the, the Diablos, the first monster. And they just kind of like... It just cuts to them being somewhere else, and they meet up with the Hunter's Guild. And then they just teleport 30 miles to the... Ron mountain. Perlman dumps some lore on them, and then they teleport to this tower. The tower yeah. from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it's it's the tower from Lord of the Rings, and they talk about how it has the ability to merge the dimensions, and has like all sorts of technology. And there's like four shots of the tower, and it looks kind of cool, because it's got like waterfalls and dragon heads on it. But then instead of going in there, they get teleported to the real world and fight the Rothalos. In the desert, yeah. In, in the blank desert. And it's all like, basically, if the movie had started where it basically ends with the last 20 minutes and expanded from there and had like an adventure, it could have been decentish. But the first hour of the movie is just mind-numbing boredom of two characters who can't talk to each other standing on rocks. Well, That's you like, also yeah. gotta keep in mind the first hour has virtually no talking, there's grunting, there's like nibbling noises, heavy breathing. The only talking we get is the first five minutes when Mila Jarvis is with her, 
Well, I was getting that, but when Mila Jovovich is with their military buddies, who each and every one is a bad actor, including notable rapper Ti, who's also fucking horrendous, who's constant audio cracking. Add to this the poorly mixed music and sound effects that literally I have a fucking migraine right now that still hasn't gone away, directly caused by the fact that this movie is just so loud, and annoying, and horribly made, and the score is awful too. There's I no upsides the to score. it. It's just screeching. It sounds like screeching, like violin screeches. Well, she wanders around the fucking desert with goddamn fucking caveman from Land of the Lost. I was just waiting for fucking Will Ferrell to show the up. First the first shot. to squeeze the boobies. The first hour of the movie probably... <laughs> that was a deep cut. The first hour of the movie probably should have been cut, and the last 20 minutes of the movie should have been turned into a full movie. Yeah, uh, it was a really ballsy move to end on a sequel tease for something that no one gives a shit about, because... Monster Hunter fans are all gigantic weebs who aren't going to want to see this, and no one else knows what the fuck a Monster Hunter is because it's for virgin weebs who can spend 3,000 hours grinding for armor in Monster Hunter. Um, Pretty much. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's weird. One, there's, like, no plot at all for the first hour, and then there's this exposition about the really cool badass tower that they have to go to. Yeah, and they teleport and you just tower. never see it. You just get teleported away at the last second. The tower is incredibly far off in the distance, and you're like, wow, this is like a massive tower. They're like 30 miles away from it. And then they just kind of end they up just there, there without anything. It just cuts and they're there. And they fight on the tower for all of 22 seconds, and then they pop away. And they're in the desert. And they're in the desert. Uh, yep, the the sequel tease is really ballsy and really cheesy. The the entire ending fight once, the fight before they get sent back to the desert is kind of cool. There's a little bit of cool shit going on. Then once it gets to the desert, it gets incredibly like boring and stupid, where she's like launching grenades into the Rothalos's throat. Yeah, and then all of help. a sudden Chaka and the other people show up and start helping her. Yeah. Out of nowhere, it's really weird. Well, the first 20 minutes gave me an instant headache because it was just loud, meet screeching, terrible score, loud dragon roars, uh, machine gun sound effects, all terribly mixed. It was like they just took like the standard That's thing, bad. cranked all the volume to full. There's no talking, it's just machine guns and shit. Like, I genuinely went in the movie feeling pretty good, feeling pretty energized, and watching the movie was an exhausting fucking experience after the first ten minutes. And then after the ear fucking rape of the first twenty minutes of the movie, they have the fucking balls to make you sit in the desert for forty minutes. And even when Mila Jonovich is alone in the desert with nothing but booby squeezing Chaka from the Land of the Lost, it still has ear rape constantly. This whole movie is an yeah. hour and a half of ear rape. It doesn't even, like... I've never seen anything like it. It doesn't even really capture the feel of Monster Hunter very well. Like, it's got some of the Monster Hunter shit in it, and it's got a palico at the ends. The like monsters, the end. from what I've the seen and what are, I know, The monster kind of designs are pretty good, and they're pretty well animated, especially for the budget. But, like... You know. Who the fuck edited the, the audio in this movie? Because no. Just. We get it, the audio's bad. Uh, yeah, it fucking ruined the experience. It's unwatchable. The movie's unwatchable besides the audio. Yes, I know, know but that even bad. makes it worse. This I'm movie trying to talk about the other aspects. What other aspects are we talking about? You just caught me out while I was talking about how it didn't capture the feel of the game. Okay, keep talking. Anyway. Uh, fuck. I don't know. It, it doesn't... There's, you know... The Hunter's Guild in the game... I know it doesn't have to be perfectly game accurate, but the Hunter's Guild is like an established thing in the game. And the Hunter's Guild area is supposed to be nice and comfy to get a break. So is Ron Perlman in the Hunter's Guild, or was he just... Were they just hunters? Yes, I don't know. I, he is the hunter skilled, I guess. It's just him and those other hey. few fucking people who died. Because there was the one CGI cat, which would be so confusing if you don't have the context of the series. Uh, yeah, yeah, there is one palico for like 30 seconds. It's weird. Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't really capture the vibe of it. Cool. 
the the fights are kind of like really weird because like all of a sudden everyone just all the characters just start shooting like fire and lightning out of their swords for whatever reason yeah that's i don't know it doesn't it doesn't have the needed intensity but it also doesn't have like the needed calmness well let me ask you it's really baffling because the story of every monster hunter story is literally you're the new guy the new recruit guy Everyone explains to you what monster hunting is and what the monster hunter guild is, and then you go hunt monsters. And they could have done that very easily, but instead they have this complicated isekai story about military Jane woman who gets teleported into the monster hunter video game for PS4, and yeah, it's well, dumb. here's my pitch: it's even dumb. if they want to go the isekai angle. What they could have done is just had Mila Jonovich and her crew drive into the cloud, her whole crew is killed, and then she gets picked up by the crew who explain what's going on. This is the plot of Transformers 1, minus the 50 other subplots. That movie's bad in a different way. But if we take the military plot from Transformers 1 with the black guy and, and, the, and Orlando, not Orlando Bloom, and you apply that to Mila Jonovich, that's already better. So yeah. I think what the equivalence ends up being is that this movie's worse than Transformers. Yeah, the first hours, basically, the long and short of it, the first hour is utterly pointless and it should have started at the last 20 minutes of this movie and, and expanded that into like some journey where a group of people who can actually talk to each other explore a weird world and become right. friends and fight some monsters. The first hour should have been 20 minutes, and the last 20 minutes should have been an hour. It's kind of like an interesting, uh, interesting how that works. So anyway, what did you think of the movie? Well, I thought it was awful. Like I said, this is, okay, so sound effect, sound design aside, even though, you know, if you're making a $60 million Hollywood blockbuster, maybe don't have your actors with mic cracks cracking. I don't know what the situation was with COVID. I don't know how rushed it was. I don't think anyone involved cared once it was out in China dubbed there. Like, I don't think they cared about the American release enough to dub it properly. I haven't seen this in any other reviews. I don't know if it was an issue with the sound channel and the theater we were at that had sound cracking, but it was only like T, it, I don't know if TI had it, but the short haired, T.I. had African American too. woman had the cracking. T.I. Like, had it, and then Ron Perlman had it. But Mila Jonovich never had an issue, so I think her ADR went through. I think it. Yeah, now leave a comment below if you end up watching this movie, which I wouldn't recommend. But if you've seen it, you know it's mic cracking. Let me know. But there's fundamentally the audio design in this movie is probably the worst audio design I've seen in a major Hollywood production, or some of the worst audio design. Like, you look at, like, Tenet, which doesn't have the best audio design, and at least they gave it a fucking honest shot, you know? He was going for something on it, even though it just ended up terrible. This is just yeah, sloppy, because, because they could, they don't, they didn't care. The plot is ass-fucking-backwards, like I was saying. The last 20 minutes of this film should have been an hour. There should have been 20 minutes where, if you want to keep the plot as is and not do it super accurate to Monster Hunter, throw Mila Jonovich in this world... Like, it, it doesn't follow the three-act structure, because Act 2 starts 20 minutes from the end, and then Act 3 is also just Act 2. Like, the first <laughs> act of this movie is an hour, and then it just... Act 3 is 20 minutes at the end. That's what happens. There's no falling action. Well, no. Act, There's not even a falling action. Act 2 is the last 20 minutes, except for the last 30 seconds, and then the sequel tease is Act 3. You know, I don't... I think... I think here's here's the actual breakdown. Act one is the first hour and ten minutes. The next five minutes where Ron Perlman explains what's gonna happen is act two. Or like when she like meets up with this unexplained crew that presumably is supposed to be set up better in the sequel. And then the climax is the ending of the film, but rather than doing like a falling action and a resolution to the story, 
what they did was say the climax is half over, but in the sequel we know is going to happen, even though this movie made $18 million on a budget of 60 <laughs> Uh, that's when we'll actually explain what's happening. So here you go. Here's the sequel tease. Get ready for that. But of course, obviously, there's never going to be a sequel to this movie. So what we're left with is a very structurally broken movie with sound effects that they didn't care about, which is jarring because the movie actually had, looks pretty good and has decent cinematography and a good look to it. Yeah, I mean, the especially issue for is, the budget, it looks yeah, very good. And uh, the one thing I don't like is the action scenes used a lot of shaky cam, like, guys, it's not 2008, get over yourselves. I don't even think it's get over yourselves, it's learn to fucking use a tripod. I'm using a fucking tripod right now. It's not that hard to do. Uh, so that's, that's a major issue, is that also there's a lot of shaky cam. Uh, so, like, a lot of, like, the established worlds and, like, the color is good. But, like, it'll be like uh, fucking Chaka, booby squeezing Chaka and Mila Jonovich having a conversation and the camera's shaking like the guy who fucking runs the camera is uh, working through a special needs program and they put him on the movie. Extreme close-ups of Hershey's chocolate wrappers. Extreme close-ups of, like, this guy, like, slurping water and, like, licking fucking spicy curry out of his fingers and, like, eating chocolate bars and speaking in the fucking foreign language. You got the goddamn special ed fucking cameraman who can't keep his fucking hands still. And then on top of that, you know, the CGI looks pretty good. And the monster designs look pretty good. Uh, but then the acting's dog shit. So essentially what you have is somebody who's like, I can make a movie look pretty good. But I don't have a cameraman that's good at his job. I have... Uh, audio design that might have been good had it not been mixed very poorly. I have actors that can't act, and on top of that I have faulty microphone equipment. I have a plot that is not correctly created. It's bad. It's a terrible plot. I have a really bad and looking wig to put on Ron Perlman. I have a bad wig on Ron Perlman that makes him look like an elderly version of Cloud from Final Fantasy who also is an elderly version of He-Man. Uh, surprisingly, I guess not super surprisingly, but like elderly Cloud and elderly He-Man both look the same when they're older, and that person is Ron Perlman from Monster Hunter. So, there you go. Uh, I, not, not even Ron Perlman gave a good performance. The directing is piss poor. Um, Ultimately, also the fact that a lot of the movie took place in one very boring location, the fact that there were so many monsters in the shaky cam that you could never tell what was happening except for when there were actual cool monsters on screen, but then like the shaky cam still kind of ruined it. The fact that Ron Perlman explained exactly what was going to happen in the climax, 10 seconds before the climax, and that's exactly what happened in the climax. You see, this is set up you have an act one. Or act or early act two, where Ron Perlman says the only weak point is like if like when the dragon breathes fire, you have to shoot in its mouth. Also, maybe bother killing one of the monster, one or two of the monster hunters, so that there's like some well, stakes. The, but instead, the all dragon, the ones that were with Ron Perlman get fucking killed. But it's just like during a rainstorm with shaky cam, so you can't even see it. Yeah, you can't tell. But the main characters survive. If you want to count Ron Perlman as a main character, he survives. Mila Jonovich survives. If Booby Squeeze and Chaka survives. So and there's like only fifteen three fake like, out deaths too. Everyone gets a fake out death at some point. Well, there's a lot of like BDSM type bondage because Mila Jonovich gets captured by the spider. She gets taped up by Chaka. Chaka gets taped up by Mila Jonovich. Ron Perlman tapes up Mila Jonovich. Ron Perlman puts Mila Jonovich in a cage. Um... Uh, T.I. and the rest of the military guys get turned into spider webs off camera um, because of course like you establish these characters for the first 20 minutes of the film why would you give them an actual scene to die they're perfectly fine in one scene hard cut to Mila Jonovich okay so Mila Jonovich is injured right you think she dies because she gets impaled and then she like falls on the ground with no pulse no one revives her she's just magically alive again in the next scene 
But then the military people who are all alive You've defending forgot. her are now dead, and Mila Jovovich is magically You've alive. Forgot. And then Boomy Squeeze and Chaka, who is stalking them the whole she time. She cauterizes her wound by dumping gunpowder and lighting it on fire. Yep, that happens. I don't think that's how it works. Also, at one point, she throws like a pile of ammunition onto a burning spider, and the ammunition start explo starts exploding, which isn't. Like, ammunition will explode if it's hot enough, but I don't think a burning spider but it's would not have gonna enough heat to... Well, even if it explodes, it's not gonna shoot a bullet out. It's gonna maybe... It's just gonna pop like a fire. It's gonna right? just yeah. expand the casing, maybe break the casing, but worst case scenario, you're gonna have small it's shrapnel. It's not gonna kill a giant spider. It's, no, it's not gonna kill a giant spider. But, um, yeah, no, honestly, if I have to describe my feelings on this film, it's like... If Michael Bay was high, was highly incompetent. Like Michael Bay makes terrible stories, but even though he sucks at directing in a way, he surrounds himself with people competent enough to usually get the job done somewhat coherently. This is Michael Bay effects. Michael Bay style. This is like everything Michael Bay except like done way cheaper and it just ends up like shit and it's a vanity project. Like if he Michael gets Bay his wife's birthday present, she gets yeah. to feel like a movie star another couple of years. Mila Jonovich. Well here's the thing, like I feel like if Michael Bay made a I'm sure Michael Bay has like a twenty five year old like uh fucking Filipino trophy wife or something. Best. I don't know for sure, but he just seems like the type. Uh, it would be like if Michael Bay made Transformers 6, but the star was his uh, terrible actress of a uh, wife. Dude. That's what it is. Like but also, probably... like, if Michael Bay was even, like, 25... If 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 Michael Bay had 25% of the talent he has right now, and put his untalented wife as the star, that's pretty much Monster Hunter. I'm saying that... that yeah, pretty this, much. The director of this film has 25% of the confidence of Michael Bay. And I've never been an av avid supporter of Michael Bay. Uh, so in terms of ranking this with 2020, and I think we're going to rank it with 2021, we don't know yet. But uh, I would say this is my new least favorite movie of 2020. Come Play has a lot to hate, don't get me wrong, I still hate Come Play. Shout out to Come Play. But there is actually like a level of being able to make fun of Come Play. And come play didn't get my migraine levels up during come play were twenty yeah. percent, where this movie was literally worse than getting tortured. I'm gonna put this movie on the same level as come play. I think they have different strengths and weaknesses. Um, they're both boring dog shit. Yep. They both sound awful. Right. They both have dog shit stories, but True. Come Play's story is a little less dog shit, but Come the monster play, on it looks a little nicer. Come Play follows a traditional plot structure. Come Play looks like dog shit, but has a story. Monster Hunter doesn't have a story, but looks kind of decent. Here's a tip for the writer of Monster Hunter. Unless you're a very smart writer and a very smart filmmaker, and you're actually trying to make a point by breaking the conventional molds of story of filmmaking, like the traditional act structure, which I don't think is a bad thing. But you actually have to be competent. I don't think they set up to break the structure on purpose. I think the man who wrote this didn't know about the structure. I think he just typed shit onto a piece of paper, and then he's like, damn. Because realistically, when Ron Perlman shows up at that hour and 15 minute mark, there's another hour and 15 minutes to this movie, but my theory the is exists, yeah. either the budget ran out, they wanted to really hard milk a sequel to the point where they're like, we won't even bother finishing this movie because a lot's going to be told in the sequel, or three, I genuinely think there's a chance the screenwriter just got bored and quit. It almost feels like a Harry Potter thing where it was like, written as like we got to the halfway point of the movie you mean like harry potter 7 or whatever yeah it, it feels like right it feels like this is literally half a movie and there's supposed to be a part two coming out but it's probably just not gonna happen right if this was called like monster hunter hunter part one and they had part two filmed at the same time I would still be annoyed, but at least I'd be like, okay, so this is one long story. It feels like half a movie, basically. But in fairness, and I am not a fan of the Harry Potter movies, especially four through seven, 
uh, four through eight, but and it's been a long time since I saw the Deathly Hollows. But I remember like the Deathly Hollows, even though there was a part two, I felt like watching the first part of Deathly Hollows, like it left you off on kind of a cliffhanger, but at least it felt like there was kind of a start, middle, and end. They kind of did a decent enough job. It what I don't like the Deathly Hollows movie. But like I remember like Voldemort gets the Elder Wand and shit, so I mean, that's yeah, kind of a conclusion. It's basically Harry's like Infinity War and Endgame where Right. Infinity War is the setup and Harry Potter seven part one is the setup and then the second part is just the big stupid battle. Right, which is Which is fine. It which works. is you can fine. do it, I guess. I mean even the Hobbits who extent uh, I like all these movies. The Hobbit didn't do it very well. The first part of The Hobbit did a good job. The second part was... The second part... This is That is the best comparison, is the second part of The Hobbit. Because it ends right before the movie is supposed to actually start. Or the, you know, it says... The Hobbit... Okay, not to get on this right now, because I'm yes, sure we've ranted exactly five what times. You're talking about. The Hobbit, and I even said this leaving the theater the first time I saw The Hobbit Part 2... They sell you a ticket, and then the ending says, "Actually, cool if you want, to, if one. you want to finish part two, part three of the Hobbit says the f- sells they, you. You have to buy they part three to finish part two. Yeah, the first part one is a first, complete movie. No, part, it's yes. a pretty boring. Part movie. one has a complete story." Part two, they lob off the last ten minutes and stick it at the start of the third to sell tickets. And then the rest then, is just a stupid battle. And then the part, well, it, it's completely disconnected because all of part two builds up to killing the dragon. And then the first five minutes of part three is killing the dragon. And then there's just a completely different movie after that. Right. It's its own little They just story. cut off the ending and stuck it on the front of a different movie to sell tickets. I almost would be surprised now if I, like, I feel like on Blu-ray nowadays if you, like, buy the collection and, like, the re-edited form and then it just actually includes the first 15 minutes of Hobbit 3 and the end of 2. That would make way more sense because it doesn't make sense to ever yeah, it did. But, but seriously, yeah, this movie is literally the Hobbit Part 2, but without but, the Hobbit Part 1 but at or least, Part 3. I will say this about the Hobbit Part 2, even though they really kind of screwed you over, at least you knew there was going to be a Hobbit Part 3. I feel like this was like... Did you like this movie? Well, you're going to have to get the studio to make a part two. Sony's not going to have much of an option now, will they? The issue is they made such a dog shit movie that how could any uh, sane human being like the rest of the movie? You give us the only part of the movie that might be interesting 20 minutes from the end. But, and then you say, come back you, for the next one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it sets it up to be like Monster Hunter 2 might actually be a decent enough movie, but truth be told, after watching Monster Hunter 2, there's no way in hell if they make a monster. Well, okay, honestly, for the review show, I'd watch Monster Hunter 2, truthfully, but if I was a general consumer, like if I wasn't going to make a review on Monster Hunt, the hypothetical Monster Hunter 2 that's never going to happen, I never would watch Monster Hunter 2 because this is perhaps one of the most bafflingly shitty it's just low quality it's garbage this is a garbage movie (laughs) and I don't mean that in like oh this is bad I mean this movie is literally garbage it's some garbage it's some unfinished garbage that because of COVID they just said no one's going to see it anyways let's just put it out who cares that's what it is you don't leave Mm -hmm. mic cracking in your studio movie I could ADR Ron Perlman's lines. Listen to this. Hey, I'm uh, Ron Perlman. Why is Ron Perlman <laughs> Christopher Walken? I don't know. I'm Ron Perlman. I was in a lot of good movies throughout the years. There you go, Mike Cracking gone. And you fit anyway. perfectly with it. You don't gotta pay me anything, Monster Hunter movies, Sony Pictures, and. So, Aiden. Would you recommend Monster Hunter? No. Connor, would you recommend Monster Hunter? Uh, there's not a scenario. It's not even funny bad. 
like at least like come play I think it might have uh, some comedic value making fun of the fact that they're making a stupid movie about a child with autism talking to his iPad he's talking to Slenderman through his iPad there is something just like so <coughs> so out of touch about making that concept into a horror movie that's supposed to be taken seriously that it's kind of funny yeah uh, this is no there's no comedic value to this um and it's a fucking horrible movie. <laughs> True. Cheers. Happy New Year. 2021, you got a lot to compete with in terms of the worst movie of 2021. I know this is a 2020 movie, but I think we'll just comment for 2021. It's 2021 release date in our state. Minnesota, baby. COVID free now, never gonna go down into another lock in again. Until like three weeks from now, when the British when we stream become communists. starts flipping. Anyway, yep, yeah, yep. And that was our overly long thirty-three minute review of Monster Hunter.